And I think we saw on display last night exactly why, because Donald Trump is not going to offer anything new to the American people. In our impression and what we've built and in our engagement with voters, he's the best person to take on Donald Trump and prosecute that case and present his vision versus what we saw last mm -hmm. night. And I'm going to say that because if they're going to come out and say all their little things on background off the record, but they're not going to be fully honest, I'm going to be honest for them. Is Joe Biden going to be exiting the race? Well, he is saying, no, they're not going anywhere. Biden's campaign chair acknowledged support slippage, but he says that Joe Biden is not going anywhere, baby. He's staying in this race. Says President Biden's campaign chair is acknowledging that he has seen some slippage in Joe's support, but that he's absolutely still in the race and he can beat former President Donald Trump. Jen O'Malley was on MSNBC and said that, yeah, there are growing calls, but we have multiple pathways to victory. We'll see. The campaign has seen some slippage, but it's been a small movement. O'Malley Dillon said in the weeks after the shaky performance, this has really been interesting because there's been like this knives out thing that we've seen over the last, not long, 24 hours even. Yesterday, we were listening from Mark Halperin, who seems like a reliable guy, but honestly, his reporting left me scratching my head. Why would they leapfrog Kamala? That's insane. And I don't think that would work out well for them if they tried to do that. In fact, I was literally, as I sat down, seeing this clip that was from The View. If they're thinking that they can throw Joe out, I'm not sure that's going to work out for him because people, especially like this woman, Hus Hostin, says that if you even think about getting rid of Kamala, you even think about leapfrogging her, you're going to have a big problem with black women voters. They are not going to be happy about this. Here is from The View. Kamala, if she is leapfrogged and there's some yeah. open convention, no Democratic nominee can win without the black vote. Black women will not support Kamala Harris being looked over. Why? Because she overlooked. is ready, overlooked. But she is ready to be the president. She's been in the uh, Oval Office with him. She's drunk. been in the Situation Room with him. How dare people suggest that she is in contact? That's true, by the way. I mean, I think it would be insane if they did that, it would be a backstab, man. It would be just like Obama backstabbed Joe. Joe got stabbed in the back by Obama. Joe, I'm your vice president. Can I please run? He's no, I want Hillary. So Hillary ran, then she collapsed like a side of beef. They threw her into a van. Now Joe is collapsing like a side of beef. They had to throw him into a van, as we saw yesterday. And so if Joe does that to Kamala, it's going to be the same thing, which, you know, it's what they say, hurt people, hurt people, which is probably what's happening here. I Not do you. think that I would be stunned if they went a different direction and voters stayed home and let Trump win, though, purely because the vice president yeah, was passed I'm, over. I so she just said black people will fall in line. That's what she said. Up to a few swing states right now, it's like a lot of white people now also. Yes. What? A lot. Oh, white? There's been a lot of white people. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> what? I know that, but, but at least a Democratic states. candidate cannot win. No Democratic candidate has won in the past five decades without the black vote. So do vote. you think that if they had a white candidate, the black vote would I think go if they to Trump? Look and leapfrog over Kamala Harris, that is going to be a problem. Yeah, I think she's right about that. She's the vice president president of this country. Are you kidding me? If they try to swap in like Whitmer or Newsom, a white guy from California, oh my gosh, it'll be a bloodbath, which is why I think they can't do that. So here was a clip from Morning Joe. The Biden campaign co-chair says the president is absolutely in this race, okay? He said it a million times. I'm so sick of you people asking this question, and I'm going to answer it one more time. Here she is. Joining us now, chair of the Biden-Harris campaign, Jen O'Malley. What's up, Dylan. Jen? Jen, thank you for being on. So, so what is the plan? Is Joe Biden still in the race? Does he plan to stay in the race? Yes. And if so, yes. what's the plan? Sheesh. Thanks so much for having me, Mika. And look, absolutely the president's in this race. You've heard him say that time and time again. And I think we saw on display last night exactly why, because Donald Trump is not going to offer anything new to the American people. He's the same person he was in 2020. He's the same person he was at the debate stage. He's the same person he is that is about himself and not about the American people. And Joe Biden is more committed than ever to beat Donald Trump. And we believe on this campaign, we are built for the close election that we are in and we see the path forward. The president is the leader of our campaign and of the country. And he is clearly in our impression and what we've built and in our engagement with voters, he's the best person to take on Donald Trump and prosecute that case and present his vision versus what we saw last mm -hmm. night. All right. That sounds pretty reasonable. I mean, Joe Biden, you know, he's got some problems, no doubt, but he's been consistent here and he's delivered on the Democratic promises. I mean, they all loved him until like three weeks ago. They were all on Team Joe. Vigorous, vigorous, vigorous. And no one likes Kamala. Even AOC is admitting this. She was apparently on for a full hour yesterday. And this is curious. And I think this is an interesting thing that she does. This is a full hour. Check this out. 54 minutes. She's on live streaming. Stephen Miller says she's high as F. Okay, maybe that's true. But she was going for an hour just answering questions. And I'm going to say what a lot of these folks aren't saying. I'm just going to say, if you think that 
that there is consensus among the people who want Joe Biden to leave, that they will support Kamala, Vice President Harris, you would be mistaken. Mm. And I'm going to say that because if they're going to come out and say all their little things on background off the record, but they're not going to be fully honest, I'm going to be honest for them. I'm in these rooms. I see what they say in conversations. A lot of them are not just interested in removing the president. They are interested in removing the whole ticket. Okay. And I do believe that she is right, actually. Actually. And I think that's good that she's speaking her mind on this. The other Democrats are cowardly. And we've said that from the very beginning. Just come out and say it, Nancy. Just come out and say it, Obama. Come on, Schumer. Just say it, Hakeem Jeffries. Why do you have to go and have these private conversations behind closed doors where you come out and you be all coy about it? Oh, we know because you don't want to be on record because if Joe doesn't go, then you're going to be on record saying this dude is demented and has to go. Then if he doesn't go, your only option is the 25th Amendment and you do not want to go that route at all. And Joe Scarborough was making the same point this morning. He said, the same thing. He says, you know, you don't know what you have until it's gone. It's true. So if we lose Joe Biden, we might get something worse. And here's what he said. None of these notions, there is no alternative. And we made this point a long time ago. If they had somebody else, they would have run that person already. There would have been a consensus, right? So let's say, God forbid, something had happened to Trump, right? There's probably a consensus on the number two. Who would that be? I don't know. Maybe Ron DeSantis or somebody, but there would be a number two, right? If Joe's off the top of the ticket, it's like, there's just only to illustrate the point that there is a kind of a hierarchy that's developed in the Republican Party as as a result of the last primary. What people close to Joe Biden have said all along is he's a man of great pride. He can be stubborn and tough. Don't back him into the corner. If he's going to do this, let him do it his way on his time frame. And when all of these reports started coming out, that's when the campaign started pushing back. And I think part of that is giving him the space to finish making this decision with his family this weekend. It's also a man of faith and a man of tremendous <laughs> historic accomplishment. And look, it's impossible oh, to Mika. ignore. Oh, I'm going to blow a gasket on that. He's a man of tremendous faith and historic accomplishment. Oh, my God. Who wrote that for her? Is she just joking with us? Where this is going and exactly what started it, I'm not right. unaware of that. At the same time, I still believe that you don't know what you have until it's gone yeah. and that there will be that feeling mm. at some point. You think if he leads the race, you think Democrats will regret it? I do. Because among many reasons, I do do. Uh, which I do I've too. already stated and I won't say it again, don't worry, but Good, none does. of these notions are backed by a right. that has beat Trump before, an alternative that yeah. is vetted, an alternative that is tested. And so that's a lot to throw away. It is. They should stick with Biden, riding with Biden through the DNC convention. I think she's right. Who else do they have, honestly? Michelle Obama is not going to be in it unless they could have somebody like, you know, Oprah or something. But even then, everybody would go, this is gimmicky as hell. And it's going to be August, any minute. And the DNC is going to virtually nominate Joe. So they're going to rip it away from him right in the mere moments before the nomination. That's terrible. So so you can see, as we heard from Joe Scarborough, Brzezinski, that he's saying Joe Biden needs to kind of make this his idea. You know, it's like when you're fighting with a child or you're fighting with like a dog or something, it's like just, you know, kind of show the dog where to go and it'll go. But if you fight with the dog, then, you know, it makes both your lives hard. So just kind of nudge him out, show him into the, hey, Joe, there's ice cream over here. And take a follow over there. So if that could happen, that'd be great. But there's a lot of tension that's building up. And apparently there's some resentment that's now building up in between the Biden and the Obama camps. This came from Eric Abenati, Abenante, who shared this. He said the relationship between Biden and Obama has never been worse. Obama camp is actively trying to replace Biden. The erosion of support's drying up. The president is privately a little bit more open to stepping aside. And he says, if you think that's a lot of frustration and resentment here, just ask the people who had to suffer under their leadership, right? Obama's hope and change is that he can swap out Joe. So here's this pour it over from MSNBC detailing some of this tension between the two. The bromance is over. We We've been covering the story for literally three weeks now, three weeks today. And all of us have had conversations with allies and aides to the president inside the White House, the campaign, close to the White House and the campaign. And yesterday, those conversations were a little bit different in the sense that some of the people that I've talked to and some of my colleagues have talked to over the last three weeks who were really intent that the president was in this, that there was a path ahead and they were plowing forward, changed their tune a little bit. And to that point, to saying we are close to the end. The writing is on the wall. Those were the kinds of things that you're hearing from people who are close to the president. It's because of a number of things Cowards. that we've been talking about. The erosion of support. Abandoning from their top man. Very public Democrats factored into this is that the president privately is a little more open to considering stepping aside. We have I doubt reported it. that he's, his conversations in the past week have gone, become, quote, reality based. There was discussion about what his place in history might look like. Things like that. Just the tone and the yeah, tenor yeah, yeah. of those conversations.
conversations are, are kind of changing. And at the same time, this is his decision and everybody is clear about that. And until he says otherwise, he is the nominee. And that's why you saw people close to his campaign and close to him come out so forcefully yesterday saying, hold up, we need to give him the space that he's in this, you know, basically back off. Because the other thing that's happening here, Willie, is there's a lot of resentment that's building up among the people closest to the president. Resentment for the way that he is being treated by some of the party's leadership, specifically former President Obama, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer. That the, their silence in all of this is feels like a bit of a betrayal, but also the leaks that they're seeing. And so what one person described this to us as is, in one word, sad. The angle of President Obama, who is a fascinating figure in where this decision goes. You broke the story yesterday that President Obama believes that the path to victory has narrowed perhaps too far for President Biden. What is the relationship like right now, not just between President Obama and President Biden, but between those two camps? I mean, there's obviously the feeling oh. among some in the Biden world that President Obama could have stopped the George Clooney op-ed, for yeah, example, he pr because he, they are so close. There were reports what, that he signed off on that. Is that dynamic like right now? The Obama and Biden camps have always had a good deal of tension that have Ooh. ebbed and flowed throughout the two men's presidencies. But right now, there is a lot of frustration and resentment. Ooh, frustration and resentment. So you can understand why they're trying to throw Joe out the door.